Governor Walz signed an omnibus veterans bill into law this week, a bill that passed the Senate unanimously and the House with nearly unanimous support. This week, I spoke with the chair of the Senate Veterans and Military Affairs Committee, Senator Andrew Lang, who joined me remotely because he's away on guard duty. The Veterans and Military Affairs Omnibus Policy and Supplemental Funding Bill has the distinction of being the first omnibus bill to cross the finish line. Why do you think an agreement was relatively easy to achieve? Well, I guess after having the agreement, it's always easy. But uh, yeah, during the oh the lead up to the end of session, and you know all the committee hearings and the uh, and the, actually the members' work on the committee as we've gone through in the process has has helped out you know immensely. Uh, I've had a pretty good relationship with Ec uh, Representative Eklund, the chair in the House. Uh, we've talked about these bills as they've gone through the process, kind of one by two. Um, we've talked about other issues that I've, that we have encountered outside the veterans, uh, you know, policy and, and financial aspects. So as it came towards the, you know, the end of session and knowing that we wanted to get something done uh, prior to and keep it out of the fray of some of the heavier lifts as far as legislation goes um, that it, it you know we had some some meetings and being that it's not a, uh, a standard uh, legislative budgetary session it's been kind of strange this year so uh, we call it the veterans omnibus bill but technically it's kind of just a veterans bill uh, it doesn't have omnibus protection, so we needed to be, you know, in, in well into agreement as we led into that day going on to the floor. So um, we got a signed agreement, and I, I wanted to make sure that uh, both the Commissioner of Military and Vets Affairs and the Governor and uh, the House were all on board prior to even bringing it to the floor. So that's what we did, and that, I, don't, I don't know, maybe it did seem easy from, uh, from the outside looking in, but we worked pretty hard on it, you know, in the months leading up to uh, passing it off the floor last Thursday, so... Um, so we've heard about the difficulties in recruiting and retaining law enforcement quite a lot this session. Uh, this bill has funding for the recruitment and retention of Minnesota National Guard service members. So it makes me wonder, is the Guard needing a bit of a boost to recruit and retain members? And why do you think this is the case? Well, uh, you know, of course, I, I don't, even though I'm sitting here in uniform, I don't speak for the National Guard. I, I make the disclaimer they don't uh, endorse any political candidates and uh, it's just that I am on duty right now and uh, so what I would say is the guard has had some some challenges when it comes to recruiting and retention you know uh, within uh, my own personal space uh, we've lost some very senior guys that I would hope would hang around later on into their careers so there's some of that retention aspect um, some of the uh, the re-enlistment bonuses like you talked about sure hopefully help that uh, we have in the minnesota guard competed uh, against a lot of the civilian sector for employees we've always done that but uh, in recent years it seems to have you know intensified a little bit especially you know in the aviation community where the airlines have been hiring so heavily or in the cyber awareness area where you know the military is one of the best trainers when it comes to cyber and uh, you know, a lot of computer stuff that I know nothing about, but I know that we do it well and that the uh, outside world, the civilian sector does pull pretty heavily from us. So, yeah, we, it's, it's hard for us to compete when we we don't make quick reactionary changes when it comes to pay or pay scales or, or compensation. So this is one tool that we have uh, that we're able to, you know, hopefully recruit some good folks and keep those highly skilled trained individuals in the force. So. I was on the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs website yesterday, and there is, an, there is a link to on-site cameras for the three new veterans homes at Bemidji, Montevideo, and Preston. So you can actually just log on and watch them rise from the ground. All three are expected to open next year. Uh, the bill adds just over $10 million this year and $16.5 million next year to these three projects. How will these additional funds be used? So the problem that we ran into, and of course this was a, a, a federal and state affair as we have uh, done something, and this is the only place in the nation, and I hope people realize how special it is that we can build three of these at the same time, these veterans homes. And uh, the, the original design of the homes were met by the, uh, 
by the financial financial obligation that both the state and federal government said said we'll pay this much money in the design of the homes are going to do that of course over the last you know three years since those bills were originally funded uh the price of construction has gone up exponentially in fact uh the, the uh <laughs> there was some issues and i have to commend the the departments both military and vets affairs as they've gone on they've taken the dollars that we gave them and said we're going to build these homes uh, and we're going to use the term uh what was it again it was uh uh <laughs> they were going to really what they were going to do is cut corners but it was a fancy military term about valued engineering that's what it was we're going to value engineer some of the aspects of the projects out uh so we can fit within the budget constraints and and uh, and there was things like uh the ambulance bay on one of the homes is going to be removed and there's just going to be doors uh there was they had gone from steel roofing that lasts 100 years to shingles that last 25 Th things that kind of bothered me as we've gone forward. So what that is, is it's a plus up, uh, the, the 10 is, the $10 million. And that's a, to fill the gaps where they were tending to fill the gaps by removing items. So, and I, I appreciate the fact that the department did that, but I think the right way to do that is go back and make sure that we have ambulance bays or that we have the right kind of roofing or we have uh, certain aspects of the design that, that really added to it. The other portion of it is uh, something that we knew was coming down the line eventually once the homes got built, and that's, <clears throat> excuse me, the inside, the uh, fixtures, furnitures, and equipment. Is, you know, we got to use the good military acronyms, but uh, it is the FF and E, the uh, the beds, the chairs, you know, office furniture, whatever it may be, that fills the inside of the homes and makes them a functional place to live and work. So. Uh, that is the two big funding mechanisms that we included in the uh, the 10 and the $16 million. So. I must admit that I was not aware that some states, uh, Minnesota is among them, offer their service men and women a bonus upon the conclusion of a conflict. Uh, this bill provides nearly $25 million for post 9-11 veterans and Gold Star families uh, since the withdrawal from Afghanistan last year essentially ended the global war on terrorism. You were excused from voting on the bill because you will benefit from this award. But as a veteran of a military conflict, what does this recognition mean to you? What does it mean to me? Um, I don't know. I'm probably in a strange world where it probably means more to me what it means to the, the soldiers, you know, sitting 100 yards behind me. Um, I would say that you know, it, it, it's funny, we, we have paid that bonus and it's, you know, it's varied over the years and how it's doled out, but we've paid it for World War I, World War II, um, you know, Vietnam, Korea, all the way up to the Gulf War. And now over the last year, since we pulled out of Afghanistan, kind of marked the end of official combat operations. So um, we, we didn't have to do it this year, but it seemed like it was a good year to do it. Um, the, the applicable service members that would be eligible for it. Um, I think number in, you know, they're in the 30,000 range. So there's definitely a lot of folks out there and it depends on who all applies and what, what the uh, requirements within the bill are. Cause there is a set of requirements or a set of levels that uh, can be rewarded, but um, you know, it's, it's not a financial windfall by any means, but it sure is a, a kind of a note of appreciation. It's like, Hey, we appreciate what you've done. And in, in the case of the global war on terrorism, it's been going on for 20 years. So it's something that, um, you know, two generations of families have been involved with. It's, uh, you know, there's several father and son, daughter, uh, you know, folks within our units that have, have served. So it's such a long time frame. And um, yeah, it, you know, it, it, it was an opportunity. Uh, we brought it to uh, the, you know, the caucus in the Senate, and I, I think I'm assuming they did the same thing in the House. And it was like, is this the right time? Should we do it now? And uh, I think everybody kind of agreed. So we started at the 25, the 24.8, I think it was million dollar mark. And uh, that fund, if if we need to go back and fill it back up next year, depending on how many uh, service members apply, we'll do that. So, um, but yeah, it's it's a special thing, and it is, you know. It's not too often that gets to happen. So, 
Finally, before we go, we're, we're running short on time, but I wanted to mention also that there's money in this bill to combat homeless, homelessness among veterans. And in particular, there's incentives for landlords to rent to veterans. Why is this so important? Well, it's, it, well, it's important for a couple of reasons. And this, you know, homelessness has been one of the focal points of both the administration and and the you know I, I can't speak for the house but i can sure say the veterans committee in the senate has been committed to it pretty heavily uh we funded you know the suicide awareness uh, last year in the budgetary cycle and that was uh you know a commitment between the committee and the and the uh the agency that we're, we're really going to go after this this isn't just pen to paper or throwing money into the air and starting a new process we really want to see results the homelessness uh and the really the pathway to home ownership or the pathway to a career and a job cycle had to be weaved into that in my my viewpoint we had to say not only is a homeless veteran going to be housed in the future or be you know helped out along the way give that hand up that they really do need but we're going to try to help them into a career path we're going to try to help them into a stable job and housing situation where the government isn't the ones paying the bills it's the veteran themselves uh, as far as the like the rent guarantee portion, I think you were talking about that is a very important thing where they can start establishing that rent credit. Rent rent credit. They uh, there, there's also a couple of other things in there where there's a temporary stuff that we talked about putting uh, eligible vets into a hotel or and that's that's not only run through the department but uh, Mac V the uh, is also been largely in, involved in that. Um, and, and the numbers seem to reflect that they're doing a, a great job. You know, um, it, the term that we've and the governor's office have been using is called functional zero. And I think that's an important term because we know that once we get to zero, the next day there may be a veteran that becomes homeless. So as we transition and say, hey, we're helping these vets out, we want to make sure that we're, we're grabbing additional uh, newly homeless or soon to become homeless veterans to help them out and get them down the path of of you know success in life so senator andrew lang we're going to have to stop there but i want to thank you so much for taking the time oh shannon i appreciate it very much